Hello, welcome once more to Blockchain for All. Uh, my name is Jaffet Pearson, and I'm happy to have everyone watching today's live event. Today is not going to be an exception, like the other days we had a wonderful speaker talking about beautiful topics, and we have been able to learn a lot from our speakers that have come on Blockchain for All to talk about uh, different topics from how the blockchain affects uh, the economy, we are seeing how we really take opportunities of blockchain, we are seeing how to even leverage trading and um, cryptocurrency on the blockchain to see how we can make profit. So a lot of topics have been discussed and you can also watch our videos on this channel that um, Heaven Academy, you can watch on B contact you can also follow me on all my social media handles to watch our previous events if you have missed that. And please, if you are watching this one live, you can also share it with your friends and family and so that we'll be able to participate in this event and ensure they learn one or two things uh, because today we are having a wonderful speaker um, that will be joining us. Okay, so this speaker has been a coach, a mentor to me. He has helped build a lot of uh, businesses and youth here in Nigeria and Africa. He has trained over 10,000 um, youths in Africa and Nigeria as a whole, and he has traveled around the world to teach about blockchain and business development. Um, he is the CEO and founder of um, ME Project uh, that deals in helping people understand how to manage their finance, how to learn digital skills, and also how to do businesses here in Abuja, Nigeria. Um, he has helped build one of the fastest layer one projects um, that is actually running. Um, he's one of the ambassadors here in Nigeria. Um, that's the Ultron project, is one of the ambassadors and other projects that are running on the blockchain. He has been um, helping a lot of youth because I think that is one of the key things the ME project has been working on, seeing how to empower youth in Nigeria and Africa to be able to gain digital skills and be able to actually fix yourself to understand how to manage businesses proper. So welcome um, today as I will be um, introducing our wonderful speaker, um, Mr. Hilary Apua. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, welcome Thank to, you so much. Welcome to Blockchain. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate what you are doing in the blockchain technology. Uh, so sorry, I was supposed to be streaming live from my office, but uh, you know, Nigerian Nepa, Nigerian power holding and how it does, and uh, I just have to use my car as an alternative. Guys, I'm super excited with what uh, Jeffrey is doing on this ecosystem. Uh, when he called upon me to uh, uh, make a presentation on the topic I, we are gonna be discussing about today, it was so amazing to see that touching people's life and also connecting to as many as possible has been my primary objective to help as many as possible. So anytime I see somebody that is diving in the way I'm diving. I also see, feel very excited. So guys, it's unfortunate that uh, you won't be seeing my face very well, but no problem. Uh, I know, <laughs> as you've seen uh, JFAT's face, don't worry. I will give you my Facebook link, everything. You check it up and see how you can uh, connect as many as possible, okay? Thank you so much, JFAT, for the information. Okay? Yeah, sure. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hilary Apua, um, I think, one of the things I'm always uh, humble to learn from you is your humility to jump on people court, more especially when you know they are doing, I know he, he loves anything that has to do with education. So I think it's one of the weakest points you have to, to get to. If you want to do anything that has to do with education, um, Mr. Hilary Apua is the right person to go to because I don't believe he ever tell you no. So thank you very much for joining uh, Blockchain for All 2023. And we are so excited to have you. Um, I know you have a lot of activities with your community and in the office, but you have uh, taken out time to join us today. Uh, to me, I will not take it for granted. Uh, for everyone joining us today, I believe um, they will learn one and a lot of things from you today. Okay, so uh, Mr. Hilary Aqua will be taking us on a wonderful topic that I feel no any other person can take it myself when I'm not um, this right man that is here to talk about, which is building an inclusive environment for blockchain adoption. Uh, it's a, a dead topic because, um, yes, to adopt something in a country like this, you need to have people that are daring, you need to have people that have the use of mind, you need to have people that are resilient, and Mr. Hillary Apple has done this, 
He has built community, and today he will be helping us to digest the topic so that we'll be able to understand how do we build an inclusive environment because uh, the environment really is not really friendly, I must say, from government policies to a lot of challenges. But I feel today we'll be able to get some of the secrets Mr. Hillary has used to train thousands of Nigerians and build communities that are striving. So thank you, Mr. Hillary. Um, over to you uh, for the next duration of your presentation. I believe uh, I will just get my pen and start taking some of the key points. Welcome once more, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much once again, Jeff Hart, for this uh, wonderful opportunity to be uh, to be streaming live on this, uh, I will call it August occasion, because it's rare somehow in our time right now to be seeing people that want to train people on the latest innovation in blockchain technology, on how they can use blockchain technology to help as many as possible. And Jeff Hart is standing tall on this innovation and hebron academy has been so amazing I've, I've been checking their pages i've been seeing what they are doing they have been so wonderfully well on this space i'll have to give it up to you uh, mr j fat you have really tried on this uh, ecosystem so guys we'll be discussing on blockchain today and uh, how we can create an enabled environment for people to know more about blockchain technology i'll be sharing my slide okay i think uh, he have shared it already Please just pay keen attention. Make sure that you jot as many as possible and make sure that you put everything you will be hearing here today into action, okay? So let us move, okay? So we're gonna be discussion on building an exclusive environment for blockchain adoption in Africa. Okay, so if you want to know me more, my name is Hilary. You can just go to my website and uh, just Google www.hilaryabwa.com. You see everything about Mr. Hilary, what I've done, people I've helped, and so forth and so on and so forth. And what I do as well, you can go to maproject.com.ng and check it for yourself. Okay, so thank you so much, Jeffat, for this wonderful opportunity. So we'll dive into what we have today. People talk about blockchain a lot and they uh, people don't really know what is blockchain. And I didn't be difficult to say that, first of all, we need to make people understand what this blockchain is all about. So I said, it, what is blockchain? It's a digital ledger that is decentralized, transparent, and secure. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay keen attention to the keywords. It's decentralized, it's transparent, and it's very secure. It is a system that, that enables multiple parties pay close attention to maintain a distributed database and transparent in a secure way without the need of central authority. A lot of people don't really know this. Let me bring it down to a layman's level because my mentor will always tell me, Mr. Hillary, if what you are explaining and is a primary or a, a kindergarten baby won't understand it, that means nobody might understand it very well. What this means that there's a solution to the modern world. Mm -hmm. There's a solution that can change the narrative of what is happening today in our system, in our in this uh, ecosystem, sorry. That means with blockchain technology, a lot of people can now trust each other to do transaction. You can hold it that this transaction is as secure as possible and you can do as many transactions as possible without having any fear or favor whether this or that will happen to a probably any transaction. But today, this is not the discussion for today. I just want to bring the primary, the, 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 the little things that everybody needs to know about this blockchain technology. And that brings us to the core values of blockchain. That is the transparency, the security, and, so, and what? The privacy, guys. If we talk about the privacy, you talk about the security, you talk about the transparency. These three things are the core value of blockchain technology. If you understand these three things that we're talking about today that you're seeing in your screen right now, you've understood every single thing that we are doing. You've understood every single thing and you can as well start diving in the opportunity of blockchain technology, guys. Having said this, how can we adopt blockchain? First of all, before you adopt blockchain, talk about the technicals of the blockchain, the social, 
and the economic adaption of blockchain. So when you talk about the technicalities and all that, how people can uh, design these with blockchain, build their restaurant with blockchain, do a lot of things with blockchain. But if in the next slide, I'm going to be showing you on the ways how we can dive in more on the technical part of this, on the social and the economic adoption of blockchain technology, guys. Please take close. Don't miss me on this particular one. So strategies on adopting blockchain technology in Africa. So number one, we'll talk about the blockchain education and awareness. Number two, we're going to be talking about the accessibility. Number three, we're going to be talking about the collaboration and partnership on blockchain projects and how it will be very seamless for a layman. And lastly, we're going to be talking about the diversity of blockchain, ladies and gentlemen. Pay close attention. So when you talk about the blockchain education and awareness, what are you talking about? First of all, the lack of understanding about the blockchain technology and its potential benefit have kept a lot of people to be doing things probably in the way 60s they are doing it. It might interest you to know that a lot of things have changed in our lifetime. Someone was telling me at that time that modern world problem requires modern world solution. Mm. There's a lot of problem in our modern world right now that requires modern world solution. And because people are not aware of the blockchain technology that they can use one or two things in blockchain to correct as many as possible. That's why they are still where they are, ladies and gentlemen. So the from number one thing you talk about blockchain when you talk is first of all on how to create the awareness for more people to know about blockchain, on how to educate more people as Mr. Jeffard and Edward Academy is doing today, to educate more people on blockchain, on what they can do, on how they can be part of what the future holds. It is no more a luxury to learn about blockchain. It is no more a luxury to make sure that you sit to learn every single class that someone invites you to learn more about blockchain and how you can put it in your daily life or mm -hmm. your business. Ladies and gentlemen, lack of a understanding of blockchain technology and its potentials have made people suffer a lot, through, go through a lot of things because they don't understand. With a little transaction that someone can do on blockchain technology, you see people using bank, using, trying to do a lot of things. Let me bring it down to, to Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency, which is the, the smaller part of blockchain. You know, people liken blockchain as just normal cryptocurrency, which, yes, is normal cryptocurrency, but there's a lot to it. Imagine that cryptocurrency have solved the problem of, uh, uh, of uh, intermediary. Probably if you want to send money to people abroad, you don't need anybody, any bank to just do your Bitcoin, go to any Bitcoin merchant and convert it, and you can go to any ATM and convert it to your local currency cash. That would what blockchain have bring to us today. And never to talk about it, people are still not aware. That's why the number one in creating more awareness is education, blocking blockchain education. That is what Jeff Hart is doing and Ebron Academy. How do we get to the grassroots? That's educating the stakeholders, captain of industries about blockchain technology and its core values. What are the core values I mentioned earlier? The core values of blockchain technology, I mentioned it earlier, the privacy, the security, the transparency of blockchain. With that, you can educate any stakeholder, captain of industries, about this wonderful technology. Because the world is changing. The only thing is, are you ready to key in on the change? Training the trainee, training the trainers. A lot of people have talked about blockchain. A lot of people have seen their friends talk about blockchain or talk about mostly what they know, the cryptocurrency. Some bunch you even know about this blockchain very very well that's why i always recommend fine tech industry 
uh, Big Contra in what they are doing, Jeff Hart in what he's doing to make sure that this technology goes to the grassroots. The other day, I saw a post someone shared on Facebook and said, wow, I didn't know that blockchain can help in the electoral system in Nigeria. There was a lecture to that, how we can inculcate voting in blockchain technology and end the vote buying and a lot of things. But because the people at the top, they don't know this. That's why you see us having a lot of hiccup on understanding that blockchain can still be used to correct as many as possible, guys. So this is number one thing that we need in improving a better environment for blockchain adoption. If you can see yourself that you can train as many as possible to understand how they can use blockchain in what they are doing today, please don't hesitate to do that. Yesterday I was in a French shop when he was talking about on how he to inculcate his Amala joint in a blockchain that people can just come and buy. <laughs> people can just come and buy and uh, impute their money, use cryptocurrency to buy, and everything is in blockchain. Guess what? He's not gonna be he's not he's not gonna be suffering about whether the, the salesperson remitted or the total amount. He's not gonna be stuck, talking about whether the stock is going down because everything is imputed in blockchain. I was just yesterday on Sunday, yesterday I was there in Maitama here in Abuja, and it was so amazing, guys. So another factor again is accessibility. Accessibility. It is another barrier to adoption of blockchain in Africa and the world at large. Technology complexity of blockchain. Once someone will see, even on the crypto space, one person saw the wallet address and say, ah, do you mean that this is a, this is a account number? I say, yeah, this is a card number. He was he was trying to compromise and said, "Are you sure that this thing? If I send money to this thing now, it will go." I say, "Yes." Mm -hmm. It's because the person has not passed through the education mm -hmm. and the awareness of blockchain. I can imagine if this is accessible to as many as possible, bringing it down to as uh, to layman, even the Meshais, understanding that they can use blockchain to sell their teas do a lot of things in their shops, it will make a lot of sense, guys. If you make blockchain more accessible, what? Number one, it, it will be very, very user-friendly, not the one you will log in. Before you understand what you are doing, you say that, please, let me just continue with my bank. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of it. I don't understand. So it will not be accessible to as many as it's only for the tech guys, people like Jeff that, that, mm -hmm. that is bringing this, this to us. I, I, there's one time I had an issue that time and I called Jeff, please, I need your help. Oh. That is what we call the accessibility. There's something, this is what has made a lot of people not to have a very good environment to understand blockchain. Because sometimes when you log into some exchanges, when you log into some platform that inculcates blockchain in what they are doing, only the interface alone will even confuse you. I don't know whether somebody has seen Bicontra here. I know Bicontra is part of the people that are sponsoring this. But if you go through Bicontra, it's as easy as ABC. Just go in there. You see what you, it's just user-friendly. And with that, people can easily see this thing I can do it myself. Oh. So another thing again is simplified documentation on blockchain on how to use it. So a layman can quickly go there, go to internet, download it, and see how he or she can inculcate what he is doing in the blockchain technology. So this blockchain is not a story for probably keep it for next tomorrow, or it is happening. I said it, I've said it before, I will say it, I say it again. The modern world problem requires modern world solution. And blockchain is the modern world solution. If, you, if we don't inculcate ourselves trying to understand more on how we can inculcate what we are doing in blockchain technology, you will see that we will still be suffering, thinking that that old way we are doing things is still working, but not knowing that it has changed. That is why this class is very important, important, okay? So note it, first thing is what? Blockchain education and awareness. The second one is what? Accessibility, 
to as many as possible, make it available, make it simple, and make people know more about it and tell them, yes, you can do this. With all this, it can reduce normal man not thinking that blockchain uh, is not for is not meant for him or her. Okay, so let's go to the, the third point: collaboration and partnership. This is very very important. This is exactly what Hebron is doing, and Mr. Jafat, which is the head uh, person in that Hebron is doing, is collaboration and partnership. A lot of people have partnered with some persons to bring blockchain trainings, blockchain opportunity to as many as possible. Collaboration between stakeholders, business owners, government agencies, NGOs, individuals. I know uh, a headbrand will, will fall into these uh, individuals because, do you know, last time I checked, I saw a lot of people viewed the, the I think uh, the last year video up to 10,000 viewers. I say, wow, imagine if the counter didn't bring this to the world. 10,000 people might not have that information. And collaborating with as many top leaders in the blockchain ecosystem have made it diverse ideas. People are talking about this. This one will come and talk about this particular one. This one will come and talk about this particular one is making people, bringing it down to a layman's language. And that is why blockchain adoption will continue to expand. People will know more because we've created an environment for people to learn. We'll make it possible to break it down to any knowledge. The other person was talking about uh, how you can trade at the other time on blockchain for all. I know Mr. Kisto talked about that in the other guy watched from the A to Z and the doctor talked about some other topic as well. And imagine bringing all this great man's idea into one book and your own is just to sit down, watch it and inculcate what you can, as many as what you can do into what you are doing. Guys, it is no, no, it's no, it's no more a luxury. It is necessity that you learn any single thing you can lay your hands today on blockchain technology, guys. If you are a business owner, if you are a government agency, uh, uh, if you are head of any agency in government, Parasata, if you are an NGO, even individual, try and look for opportunities like this. Collaborate with, with companies like this to make sure that your people, your staff is being trained on blockchain. With that, building an inclusive environment for blockchain adoption will make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Because the other time I went to train in uh, in uh, uh, Ibadan, sorry, Lagos, and someone was telling me, what is even this, this Bitcoin? As popular as Bitcoin, some people don't know about it. As popular as Bitcoin, someone will say, ah, at least I know Bitcoin now. So people don't know about it. What they know is that they have a shop in the morning, just go out to your shop, buy it. They are still doing things the normal way people used to. They don't know that the world is changing faster. But the question is, are you ready to change? Okay? If you are not ready to change, it will still be done on you that a lot of things, a lot of things will leave you behind. People will leave you behind and the what? And you will still be dangling with what you think you know. So above listed is essential to building a robust and inclusive environment for blockchain technology. It also includes working together to develop a particular interface or a particular solution that will run on blockchain. Imagine getting someone like Tony Lubelu and uh, bringing him on board that no matter what you, all the person that will be going to be registering under your uh, foundation, we can incorporate them in blockchain and see how we can take the data and achieve to a particular result. Him being part of the building will make him adopt blockchain, guys. I'm talking about Tony Lumeli, but probably a lot of people know him. But even in what you are doing, as a business owner, if you make inquiry and probably ask Mr. Jaffat, how can I inculcate a blockchain in my business to attract more values to it you see that he will give you 1001 solutions he will tell you we can build this for you we can do this for you we can do this for you with that you are collaborating what right you are partnering with him to do what 
with that, you will know more. As he's building it, you are learning more. As he's doing it, you are inculcating it in what you are doing. You are adding it value to your business and you are getting more customers, guys. It is no more an option. It is a necessity that blockchain needs collaboration and partnership, especially with those that know more about it. Guys, we're rounding up, okay? So the last one is the diversity. Building a diversity and inclusive community around blockchain technology is essential to creating an environment where stakeholders feel welcomed. That I don't know much about uh, blockchain technology doesn't mean that when I call uh, probably Mr. Tega or, or, or JFAT or, or an Ingolo to tell me more, he will tell me, I oh, know you don't know this. Please go, no, 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 no. No matter the race, the gender, the ethnicity, social economy background, everybody can be part of blockchain. Everybody can do as many as possible in blockchain. Any business can strive on blockchain. Any government policy can strive on blockchain. NGOs can strive on blockchain. Anything you can mention it. I say it again. If you have not written it down, write it down right now. Modern world problem requires modern world solution. And blockchain is the modern world solution to solve as many problems as possible, guys. So don't think that because you have background on business or you have background on acting or you cannot inculcate. No. Partnership. Look for someone that knows about it. Just partnering with the person will make you learn more and you start liking this business or you start liking this uh, ecosystem. And guess what? That is how some of us started. I never knew about blockchain till 2015. Someone told me about it. I wanted to sell Bitcoin and I was not start, I, I started being curious. I said, what is all this? I started researching, I started researching and guess what? I thought it's only, only Bitcoin you can just buy and sell. But guess what today, guys? I've trained as many as possible on this ecosystem. Okay, so first one on what we said earlier on how we can adopt blockchain strategies. Number one is what? Blockchain education and awareness. Number two is what? Accessibility. Number three is what? Collaboration and what? And partnership. And last one, but not the least, is diversity on creating more awareness. Ladies and gentlemen, saying this, I want to conclude with this. Whether you like it or hate it, blockchain ecosystem have come to stay. A lot of people is going to live in the same system. It is left for you to accept it right now and make sure that you start now that you know about it to add it in what you are doing on a single day, every day, every week, every month learn one thing at a time one of my friends told me that if you want to learn a particular thing just learn one thing every day before you know it you have learned all okay so also if you are rich or poor you can use the same infrastructure build on blockchain so you need to encourage anybody using blockchain right now to see how you can partner imagine building the nigerian electoral system in blockchain Imagine, imagine uh, 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 let's say that uh, the Aso Villa is running on blockchain, all the transactions in Nigeria, the Ministry of Finance, all everything is concentrated in blockchain. But I see a future where all these things will still be inculcated in blockchain technology and people have access to it, access to it. Maybe not now, but I'm seeing a future. I'm so inquisitive, I'm so very positive about this. I'm seeing a future where people will say, wow, this is what we have been missing. If ATM card can be one of the things people use today that was rejected years back, and today people use it on a, on a daily basis, anything can happen. Innovation will still come, and people will still be part of innovation. So teaching as many persons, you can create awareness on blockchain adoption, and people get to know more about blockchain and see how they can put it in what they are doing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me talk to you. Thank you so much for being part of this wonderful opportunity to create awareness on adoption of blockchain technology. Please 
note the point that will set down and make sure you elaborate and also see how many persons you can get to watch this video so they can understand them too have access to blockchain technology thank you so much jeffert i remain my humble self mr hilary <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, I really appreciate it. I have been writing, filling my pages with a lot of these um, key points. I think um, it's a very short and um, precise and um, slide there, but it, had, it carries weight because we have seen a lot of concepts from understanding the core of what blockchain does from the privacy, security, and transparency, which is something we see that even in the Nigerian um, sectors we, we lack. And um, if only we can have these things, I think a lot of Nigerian sectors and ministries will be working. We can have the privacy, we can have security in place, and we can see the transparency of what is happening, how our funds are being spent. I think it will have solved a lot of things and wouldn't have been as a country in this current position. And we also talk about strategies. I know a lot of people would have loved to start asking about um, your strategies, but you, you made it so simple. So for anyone, for somebody like me, I already understand, I've already understood how you were able to build um, thousands of Nigeria and thousands of communities because you mentioned the key thing. One, it has to do with what with the blockchain education. We have to actually pick it um, um, as a key stuff to do because uh, we have few people actually, just like you have said, that are actually taking it passionately to teach people. Um, so many people are just um, reluctant in learning something new, but um, education is something that will help us actually see the growing need. For people to go into um, this industry and talk about accessibility uh which is like a lot of platforms need to be accessible people need to know there are platforms that you can use and they should be able to actually make it very easy for everyone so i believe education also makes accessibility more open just like you have explained then collaboration and partnership i think uh, nigerians will need to actually do the habit to um, learn how to collaborate not everything is about um, who will win or who is leading um, sometimes you have to understand that um, being um, collaborative or having a collaborative mind, uh, mindset helps you grow your business faster. And that's what we're also trying to do, see how we can connect with other people, other uh, community leaders, to see how uh, we can bring uh, more of this education to our viewers and everybody around. Then diversity, as we all the speakers will say, blockchain is not biased, blockchain is not gender sensitive, blockchain is for everyone. Um, it doesn't select business, it doesn't select persons, it doesn't select religion, it doesn't select region. So everything the blockchain brings, it brings for one and it brings for all. So it's all about how we are able to um, adapt with it and receive it. So thank you very much, Mr. Hilary. Just a summary of what you have done, but you have explained so much. And I believe everyone watching this video um, would have gotten much and much value than uh, we are even expecting. So thank you very much for this wonderful time, Mr. Hilary. Uh, I think we are going to the questions and answers, and some are really dropping the questions on WhatsApp. But uh, my advice is, if you are watching live, um, kindly just drop your questions on the comment section. If you are watching from YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook, just drop your questions on the comment section. You don't need to go to our WhatsApp. You just drop it on the uh, comment section. Our uh, speaker will be able to see it live, and everyone will be able to see it live. If you have any shout out. Uh, for our speaker, uh, maybe I'll be able to pick one or two things you can write it and say, put it, sir. Uh, we appreciate whatever you are playing. So, write it on the comment section. Whatever you put, it's an opportunity for uh, our next millions of viewers to be able to see that, yes, you are um, part of the people that watch this video live. So, you can share your comments so that we can share it on live and I will continue that way. So, sir, um, we'll just be going quickly into the question and answer for an, another um, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, Yes, you have thought about this. Uh, our question from Hebron is, yes, we know you have done a lot when it comes to teaching um, communities you have implied, uh, applied these strategies. Uh, but we want to just ask, how do you manage um, some of the challenges when it comes to managing communities? Because as a community, we also have um, some of these challenges, but because you have been in this space long before we do, uh, we just want to ask, how do you manage some of the challenges with managing communities? Because sometimes you might come with a project, you might um, go in, present the project. At the end of the day, it might not turn out the way you want to do it. Uh, how do you manage some of those um, little issues with um, your members? Sometimes you might actually present something that might not go out the way you want it to be. Or different challenges, but how do you um, manage that? Because those strategies of managing is different from managing 
how the adoption goes. So uh, just kindly give us uh, some of the, your strategies, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Jafet. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so thank you so much, Jafet, uh, for that uh, question. Uh, managing community is as as if you are managing yourself. First of all, if you if you don't manage yourself very well, you can manage community. If you are not a disciplined person, you can manage a community. So if, first of all, is you. You have to start from you. If you manage you, if you develop you, if you make yourself an outstanding personality that people can just read through you, your community is easy to be managed. A lot of people have said what they are not doing. That is why, because at the time, okay, let me use this analogy. A growing child look at what you are doing and do exactly what you are doing, what you teach him or how to do. So community have been a very big challenge. If you are the kind of person that don't keep to the policies or the promises of your people, or you know that this is supposed to be this way, and you went ahead to do it the other way around, and tomorrow you want someone to do that thing that you, that you know that this is the right thing to do, it's not going to work at all. That's why people build community today, and you see before tomorrow, that, that community is no more again. We've been in this space for more than 10 years, and we've seen a lot of people. People might come today and say, Sir, I want to work with you. I've seen what you're doing. I've seen, I've seen your work, a lot of that. But when you look deep down, they are not, they cannot keep to the disciplines that brought you thus far. When you look deep down, they cannot manage some of the things that made you come to the level you are. Because I always tell people that people, uh, someone will say, Lara, I want to walk in your shoe. See, my shoe is not very sweet, though. <laughs> Do you get it? My shoe is not very sweet, but if you pass through the shoe that I passed through to get where I am today, it requires a lot of self-discipline. It requires a lot of principle. It requires a lot of things. So for you to be build a community where people can always come, get value, and recommend as many as possible requires a lot of things, as I said. You need to first of all work on yourself. You need to first of all create the things that you want your community to look like. So anybody that is coming to that community will look at this. This is the, this is the database and look at it and see we are flowing with this. But when you don't have one, everywhere becomes your target. Mentor will always say that when you don't have targets, everywhere becomes your what your target. So first of all, yourself create what you want your community to be probably in five two, three years, then when people are coming, you show them the blueprint, they key in, tell them about the future, tell them about what you want to be, where your dream and aspiration is going to be. They're going to key in with you and want to fly with you. And with that, you build a robust community. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful answer. To, to, uh, to have linked, um, some of the two strategies you have used. Uh, on managing our crisis in the community. Please, for our viewers, if you have any question, uh, if you have any comment, you can just write in the comment section while we're still live. I'm um, sure so that our speaker will be able to see them. Uh, I know a lot of folks will still come to watch this video. Uh, what you need to do is kindly share it. Uh, but if you have what you are watching, maybe possibly after this live session, you can follow our speaker on the handles that we are going to share. And most probably ask me questions regarding this topic, and I believe it's going to. Um, sweetly answer you uh, straightforward. You don't have any, any challenge. But if you are watching now with us, um, kindly um, share your questions. Uh, you might have any questions that has to do with community building and the adoption of how um, cryptocurrency or blockchain can help, uh, can continue to strive in this country. So you can share your questions quickly before uh, we end the last session. So the next question from someone is, um, with the current policies that are going in the country, with government, do you think it is possible that we are going to see more of this adoption in the coming years. So that's a question from someone. Okay. Yeah. People are already yeah. scared of what, what government is doing and a lot of challenges. Yes. Even people that is jackpying here and there, I know very soon they will want to come back. <laughs> mm. Because I don't know, I so much believe in Nigeria and I believe that one day 
uh, that some of the challenges of Nigeria will be solved using tech guys like you, Jeffard, the blockchain ecosystem, because uh, the people that rule their world have ability to do three things. Mm. First of all, they create, the first, second, they calculate, and they position. But mm. if you have not created, leverage on someone that have created and calculate, then position yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigerian is still a virgin ground for anybody to learn as much as he can learn. If you go to Europe, let's say that 40 to 60% have known about blockchain. But African, I think we are less than 10% that know about blockchain and what blockchain can do. So where you can be part of this in noble people that will learn and show them people tomorrow that this is how this thing is done. Forget about that Jeffat is here bringing all these blockchain guys to talk about it. Yes, he started somewhere. But you that is listening to me today can also start. Nigeria is still a very good place for you to learn about blockchain. So nothing is happening. Someone tell me that uh, uh, what of the e naira that they blocked, brought about before. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the uh, everyday discussion is going on how blockchain can be used to inculcate in one or two government policies or well, because that's people that probably are benefiting from those policies or the other they are fighting against it so we believe that one day someone that knows about blockchain and what blockchain can do to the country or to the environment will also be in position like that who adopt people know more about it nigeria gets to know even all the african countries get to know more and it's you guess what we'll have a better uh, position and everybody smiles up. so it's still a good area for you to start from people people don't really know but little you know can help as many as possible thank you exactly. thank you sir thank you for that um answer to that question i believe our um person asking question has gotten answers to that. someone is still asking on the screen now like how do you help people become disciplined when their whole life has been non-challenged <laughs> uh, what system have you used over the years? You know, yes, yeah, there are so many people you are so interested about their growth, but they don't want to even grow. So, uh, most probably you must have come across such people, but how have you been able to also help them become non uh, to become um, serious people and go out of that non challenge attitude? So okay, thank you so much. Uh, he, he said, "Is uh, 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 when their whole life has been <laughs> nonchalant." <laughs> Let me laugh to this. Uh, first of all, nobody knows you like you. Mm. It's only you that knows where he's pinching you. It's only you that knows where you are not doing it right. If you identify those areas, the problem is half solved. Imagine that. Uh, you want to become uh, probably a well-known speaker tomorrow and you want to learn as many as possible. You know, you first of all start from reading, right? Yes. And probably when you bring book to read, you will start dozing off. You say, let me just go and sleep today. Tomorrow I won't. That is the discipline that we are talking about. For me, I used to, I used to be like that, but I disciplined myself that, Hillary, before you go to bed, you have to finish a particular chapter of a book and with that guys i covered as many books as possible then even when i'm sleeping when sleep will come i will nod my head but my brain is still telling me see you have to finish this but whenever you listen to your body not your brain <laughs> mm. you are always diverting guys you can discipline yourself no matter what there's no pilot today that just wake up and say that, that he's a pilot. Mm -hmm. He went exactly. through discipline of school and become where he is today as a pilot, dissenting as medical doctors and engineers. If you are listening to my voice right now, you can discipline yourself. Just tell yourself the same way that you went to school and they say that exam is probably in two months or in three months and you start preparing for you not to fail your exams. That is the same way that you said, I want to become this in life. And you start seeing yourself as that. And you start drawing the disciplines that will make you achieve that result you want to achieve at last. Because if not you, nobody can come and do it for you. My mentor will always tell me, Mr. Hillary, nobody will do your push-up for you. If you, have, if you want six packs, go to gym. 
If you want to become healthy, eat healthy food. Mm. You don't want to sit back and someone is gymming for you. No. It is you that will determine what you want for yourself. So the key point you have to note, if you want to discipline yourself to be part of where this world is going, is first of all, if you say that you want to wake up by 6 a.m., set your alarm by that 6 a.m., you are, you are up. Anything less than that, there should be a punishment to that particular thing. Mm. If you say that you're going to finish uh, probably a 500 book, uh, a 500 page book in one week, finish it in one week. What are you going to do? Divide that 500 book, that 500 pages by what? By seven days. Give yourself a target that in these seven days, this number of pages I'm going to read. With that, mm. once you do it, one week, two weeks, one month, it becomes a habit. And once you do it for three months, it becomes what? A lifestyle. Guys, there's no way to discipline yourself than this I have said that right now. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful answers to Mr. Samuel's Adeni's question. Um, so as I've said, we, uh, we all know ourselves better. So uh, some might be feeling different challenges. Some might be feeling, uh, facing different issues, but discipline is a key thing and it's very important. I think everybody is shouting discipline, discipline. So as the way we are shouting discipline, we know that that's what we need to do to ourselves. For every challenge out there, what I've got to understand is that there's a discipline that will help you uh, tackle it or overcome that challenge. So uh, that's that's a wonderful one from you. So thank you very much. Um, so many people are joining in now. Uh, please, we are already in the question and answer session. And if you have any question about the topic which has to do with building an inclusive environment for blockchain adoption, you can go ahead, ask your question. And if you have any comments, please um, you can uh, post your comments so that our speaker will see it and he will also appreciate it. And Mr. Samuel Deni is saying thank you for the answers. We really appreciate uh, People from the group are saying thank you very much for the wonderful session. Thank you for making it very um, precise and brief. We're able to get value. Um, thank you for making blockchain um, adoption explanation. Someone said thank you for making it very simple. Like most times they used to talk too many stories in it, but uh, thank you for making it so simple and <laughs> making it interesting for someone to actually um, love. Yes, you know, a lot of, that I said, there are people that teach and there are people that teach teachers. So, so many people might come and explain the same topic in a very bulky way, but he's saying thank you for making it very easy and interesting. Um, topic for someone to also make this insight on. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'll just give a few rooms for some questions. And uh, some of the questions on the group have already been answered. If you have been following the video, please, if, if those questions have been answered, there's no need for us to um, keep repeating them. Um, so if there's any new question, can you drop it on the comment section? Or if you see it, you say, okay, the question just came in and he said, okay, sir, uh, how do you manage building your community, managing the family, and also building your office work and other activities? And with your reading okay. and mentoring work at the same time. So maybe so many people are really thinking of going into aspect of education, but they have to think of how do you manage um, your platforms, how do you manage your family, how do you make money? Because sometimes it's possible that what you are doing is free, just like the event is free. So how do you and find a way to strike a balance a very good question okay thank you so much for that question uh you know in my play they say family first whatever you are doing uh is your family i'm married with kids and also my community my office we have a lot of things that we are doing as well and also uh, uh, people come every day for consultancy and we still do training like i said before everything start with discipline because i've have discipline that there's time for a particular thing i've trained myself that no matter what if that time gets to what i'm supposed to do at a given time this is what i'm doing if it's time for family i go for my family and i know that probably this is the right time and no phone calls no distractions everything just have to be the way it is and with that my wife won't complain that i don't give her time a lot of people will now say wow see this way some people that know my wife will say ah, these people are doing things together i say it's because it's the way that i understand it and i made it people 
have mm. that sense of what I say, see, Mr. Hillary, how do you even manage this? Someone said that you guys are poor couple. I say, yes, because you understand it. And no matter mm. what the step I'm taking, I tell my wife, this is how people are not going to, going to come home earlier today. This is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to do this. Explanation, communication, it helps in balancing whatever you are doing and making yourself stand out. Mm. But it's not easy. But no matter what, you have to have the discipline. But if you have not been disciplining yourself, when you are starting it today, it might be difficult. It's because of the discipline I have in the previous years. That's why I, I got me this far. I got me the result I have. And also make me uh, be at, the, at what I'm doing and like what I'm doing. It is what I've put in, in place my years back. I will tell you a little story of myself. There was a time that uh mr eli that you are seeing today i couldn't go out i was just devouring some books just to get better moving from where i am to a better place all those things that that things that i put in myself there's some trainings that i undergone I, I, i've gone through just to do what just to discipline myself to become where i am today but it's not bad that you are starting today they said the best time to start was yesterday Another best time to start is today. So even if I started probably, let's say, uh, uh, seven years ago or five or five years ago, thereabout, you can still start today because there's still five years in, uh, ahead of you. No matter how old you are, no matter how where you are in the society, but all those things need to put in place. Explanation, making sure that everybody is being carried along and making sure that this is what you self wanted for yourself. With that, everybody will be eating or eating on his or her own side because you've settled, you know how you settled everybody, you know how, how this is going to be, probably how it's going to play out, and you have your goals, and you see achieve what they want to do. Thank you so much. I hope this answers your question. It does. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for this wonderful explanation. Discipline has been one of the key anchor words and we are sure after today, uh, a lot of us will discipline to ensure that we do things that um, changes our life and make us even better. So thank you very much for everyone that have um, taken our time to watch this video. Uh, we really appreciate you. We, we thank you for taking our time, uh, leaving a lot of activity just to make sure you have joined um, with, with our guest speaker to be able to learn one or two things from the world of his experience. So uh, thank you very much. I uh, thank you for the uh, ME project. Thank you for what you guys have been doing in the industry of education, education and empowering you um, to understand how to take advantage of technology and become better. So we really appreciate you. Uh, thank you for all our sponsors uh, from Hebron Academy to uh, the contact to Benny Agro Limited and other sponsors. Uh, we really thank you guys for all you have been doing. Without you, this program will not have been um, feasible. But thank you for all you have done. And to everyone that has been sharing this video to their community um, since when we started three years ago, we want to appreciate you. Um, the videos are readily available for you to share to your communities. And at the end of um, blockchain uh, for all 2022, we are going to have a bundled uh, course to give out for free for everyone to use. Uh, so, I'll kindly ensure you follow our social media pages, follow our speakers, and can ask them questions. Um, our social media pages will continue to post more on when this event will continue. Um, this event will continue to the end of this month, hopefully, with more speakers coming up. So uh, just keep it a date, ensure you follow our pages to know when the next speaker will be coming up and the topic that we'll be talking about. Uh, thank you once more, Mr. Hilary Apua. Um, please, you have one minute for your last word of advice, as we call it today. Okay, what I will tell you that is listening to my voice right now is that anytime you see an opportunity to learn, don't hesitate, don't ignore it. Make sure that you utilize it 100%. Mm -hmm. If you see videos that will teach you from what you used to know to a new thing, utilize it and share to as many as possible. Heron Academy is trying to bring blockchain to the grassroots and make sure that you key in, share to your community, share to as many as possible, and make sure that you pass this project to as many as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I can't wait to celebrate with all of us at the top. But before we get to the top, let us build ourselves, discipline ourselves at the bottom. So when we get to the top, we'll get to enjoy ourselves together. Thank you so much. You can follow me on social media or you can go to our website, www.hilariabwa.com or maproject.com.ng. You can see what we are doing there. You can also be part of our community. Thank you so much for having me, Jeffat. I can't wait to celebrate with all of us together again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you very much and good night. So everyone enjoy your night race and we'll meet again um, on the on the third where we'll come with another speaker that will be teaching us a wonderful topic. So keep it a bit with us and thank you very much. Good night. Thank you so much, Jeffat.